Welcome to Scone Bake and Beyond. Hi, I'm Kathy, and I enjoy making scones, muffins, cookies, and all sorts of delicious baked goodies. Growing up, I had the opportunity to go to summer camp, and some of my fondest memories at, some, at summer camp are making s'mores around the campfire. Oh, they are so delicious. So today, I'm going to share with you my recipe for s'mores macarons. These delicious macarons have a graham shell and are filled with a yummy chocolate ganache and a ooey gooey marshmallow fluff. Your family is going to love these. So let's bake. When making macarons, it's important that you measure by weight rather than by volume. So you will need a kitchen scale for making macarons. So let's get started. I'm going to whisk together 150 grams of powdered sugar, 120 grams of almond flour, and because these are s'mores macarons, I have 20 grams of graham cracker crumbs. We're going to whisk these ingredients together. Now that our ingredients are whisked together, we need to put them through a sieve. So we're just going to spoon a little bit at a time. And this is to get out any large pieces of either almond flour, powdered sugar, or the graham cracker crumbs. Okay, that looks good. Now you might have a few little extra crumbs in there and that's okay, we'll just discard them. They're actually too big for the macarons. And now we're going to set this aside. So now it's time to make the meringue. When making a meringue, it's important that you either use a stainless steel bowl, a glass bowl, or a copper bowl. But don't use a plastic bowl because your meringue may not come up to stiff peaks. So let's get started. I have here 100 grams of egg whites and these egg whites are at room temperature. And this is about three eggs. I have my mixer here fitted with a whisk attachment. We're going to put this on medium speed until the egg whites are frothy. Okay, now that the egg whites are frothy, it's time to add one quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. This will help stabilize your meringue. We're going to start this on low speed until the cream of tartar is incorporated and then we're going to bump it up to medium high speed until we get trails. Okay, now that we have trails, it's time to add in our 66 grams of castor sugar and you do want to use castor sugar for this. So I'm going to add it in really slow. Okay, let's see if we've got to stiff peaks yet. So we'll take out our whisk attachment, keep out our bowl, give it a nice stir around. And see that droopy? That's not a stiff peak, so we need to take it a little bit farther than that. So we're going to put it back on the mixer, get our whisk attachment back on, and go at least another minute. Okay, let's see how we're doing. There we go. Get a little look around. Now there's some stiff peaks. See, they're not drooping anymore. That's what you're looking for. And you can turn this upside down and nothing will come out. Now you know you have stiff peaks. So we'll get everything off this whisk attachment. Now that our meringue is together, it's time to add our dry ingredients. So we're going to do this in three stages. So I'll take about one third of this. And we're just going to fold this in. So I go up and around, up and around and over. And you keep on turning the bowl as you do this. Now 
separated, we want to keep on folding it until we get what we call a lava stage where the batter just flows off your spatula and you can make a figure eight. So right now, it's a little too thick. It's almost there. Okay, we can make a figure eight. It's settling down onto itself, so it is ready. So I have here a 16 inch piping bag with fitted with a number 1A tip. And I crimp this up because this batter will just start flowing through that tip. So I crimp it up and put in my glass here. I'm going to fill this bag up. I have here a baking sheet fitted with parchment paper and I made a template for myself. Now you can go out and buy a template, but I just made my own. They're one and a half inch circles and they're two inches apart. I just did it on my computer, print it off. As you can see, I just taped it together. So that is my template. So we'll put that underneath. There we go. So I have my macaron batter here. I'll just twist this around and flip it over my index finger and it's already coming out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to squeeze, stop, give it a little twist and come up. Squeeze, stop, Give it a little twist and come up. Now that I've piped all of these, I'm going to remove that uh, template. Try to do it without disturbing too many macarons along the way. Here we are. Remove that. We'll put that underneath our second baking sheet. And now what we're going to do is we're going to give this some good wax to get all the air bubbles out. If you see any peaks, just take your finger and push them down. If you see any air bubbles, just take a toothpick and just pop the air bubbles. Now because these are s'mores macarons, but we're going to add a little bit more graham cracker crumbs to it. So I have here just a little bowl of graham cracker crumbs and it takes about three tablespoons and a little sieve. So I'm going to put a spoonful there and just kind of shake it over each one. And this will add just a little extra graham cracker to your shell. Just like real s'mores. We're going to let these dry for about 30 to 60 minutes until they're dry to the touch. Okay, it's been an hour. I preheated my oven to 320 degrees and if we touch our macarons, they're dry to the touch. So now we're going to bake these at 320 degrees for about 15 to 17 minutes. Okay, it's been 17 minutes and our macarons are finished baking. There we go. And how you know your macarons are finished baking is that the top does not wiggle separate from the bottom. So you want to make sure when you wiggle it um, that the parchment paper goes along with the wiggle and the top doesn't wiggle separate from the bottom. We're going to let these cool completely and then we're going to start making the filling. Okay, now it's time to make our chocolate ganache while our macarons are cooling. So I have here four ounces of dark chocolate, that's 60% chocolate. And what I did was I've broken up my dark chocolate into small little pieces. So now I'm going to add one half cup of heavy cream that I brought to a simmer. It just got little bubbles around the edges. We're going to let that sit there for one minute. Okay, it's been one minute, so we'll just kind of give this a nice little stir. The chocolate is getting all nice and melted. And I have here one tablespoon of room temperature butter. We're going to add that in. And we're going to stir this until it's nice and smooth. Okay, this is nice and smooth. Chocolate ganache is so good. Anyway, we're going to set this aside until it comes to piping consistency. And every once in a while, you want to give it a nice stir. Now, you can put this in the refrigerator and kind of speed up that process. But you have to be careful because it will go to beyond piping consistency and too hard to pipe. 
really quickly. So you can just leave this on the counter and just give it a stir until we get to piping consistency. And what you're looking for is something little thicker than pudding. Okay, our cookies are completely cooled. Our chocolate ganache has kind of come to a really thick pudding kind of consistency where it just kind of plops. And so we're ready to pipe this onto our macarons. And uh, my marshmallow fluff or marshmallow cream, whatever you want to call it, is in a piping bag and ready to go. So we'll first get our chocolate ganache on here. And what I want to do is just make a ring. So I'm just going to pipe a ring around. There we go. Each one of these. So I've matched up my macarons here and I've uh, turned one filling side up and one is filling side down. So we're just going to pipe a ring around each one of these. Now the last one here. All right. Oh, these are going to be so good. Okay, so now we're going to pipe on this marshmallow fluff. And there's about three ounces in here. Um, so it's about half of a container. A container is about seven ounces. So it's about half the container. And if anything, you can always add more if it's not quite enough. Now, um, to get this out, it'll pipe out just fine, but then it'll kind of stick. So what I do is I take a spoon and I get some cooking oil, just regular canola oil, vegetable oil, and I just kind of wipe the spoon, and that way the marshmallow fluff won't stick to the spoon. And this is how we're going to pipe this on. We're just going to pipe it in there. There we go. And then take our, pull it out and take our spoon to hold it down. Pipe it in there, pull it out, take our spoon, keep it in place. And you may need to add a little bit of oil back on the spoon again if it starts to really stick. There we go. All right. They're all done. So now it's time to put them together. Now, if you had a little kitchen torch, and I actually don't have one, but if you have one, you could torch all of these and give these marshmallows that nice little campfire little flavor. But I don't have one, so... If you don't have one, that's okay. We're just going to put the top on the bottom and kind of squish it together until that chocolate ganache comes out to the edges. Don't push too hard because you'll break your macaron shell. And there they are. They're completely done now. Oh, these are going to be so good. Now, typically, you put these in the refrigerator for 24 hours so that the flavors melt together. So I'm going to put these in the refrigerator for 24 hours, except I don't think you want to wait 24 hours for me to test one and make sure it tastes okay. So I'm going to try it now. So we'll just take this one right here, and it's time to try it. Mmm. Mmm. All the wonderful flavors of a s'more over the campfire. You have the graham flavored shell, and then that wonderful chocolate ganache, and then that yummy, ooey gooey marshmallow inside. Mm. It's like having a s'more in a macaroon. Mm. These are so good. Your family will love these year round, summertime, wintertime, it doesn't matter. These are really good. For the complete recipe, please go to my website, scumbaking.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. I hope this recipe inspires you to bake. Thank you for watching. Mm.